what would be the best method to <laughs> repair your credit? The best one? I can't really honestly say, man. Uh, I'm not trying to be liberal with the answer, yeah, but yeah. yeah. Like, I got people that literally get results from Metro, too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, some people don't know how to factually dispute, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but in Credit Fixer, the software helps you understand how to do that. Like, I got over 150 factual di dispute reasons that you can select from just a drop down. Mm -hmm. drop down right with the laws with the consumer laws in there mm -hmm. right um i also got a violations uh report so when you import your credit report if you don't know how to read a credit report yeah. credit fixer will analyze your credit report and find all the violations that's being mm -hmm. reported mm -hmm. because with the with the with what happens is these credit reporting agencies have to report in a certain uh way or manner mm -hmm. compliantly that's why that's where you get metro 2 compliance from mm -hmm. right so um <clears throat> So they have to uh, uh, report your information 100% accurately, fairly, and um, complete, mm -hmm. right? That's literally what the FCRA states. Mm -hmm. And when, so my software, I analyze your credit report and find out where it's incompleteness, where it's inaccurate, mm -hmm. and then you just, you know, point them out. Describe myself in two words, rich and unemployed. These stones cost two birds. Let it count it when she bored. Deposit hit chicks, clearing A. Nothing void. I know that ain't my ex calling. Null and void. Where we going? Money going up. Welcome to the Rich and Unemployed count. Podcast. I'm your host, my Jonathan Gibson, aka up. Finesse. Uh, before we get started, make sure you guys check out the Patreon for the exclusive content. Make sure you guys check out the website for the merch, www.richunemployed.net. And uh, man, I got a very, very special guest here today. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, brother. Man, it's a, first of all, it's an honor to be on your podcast, my brother. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, man, I'm Kabir, Kabir Muhammad. I'm the creator and founder of uh, Credit Fixer, the Credit Fixer software. That's credit, F-I-X-R-R.com. So y'all check me out, man. Um, man, the software is designed to empower consumers with the knowledge, tools, and resources to fix your own credit. Got you. Okay. Now you have your own software. Um, how the hell you do that? <laughs> like, where did that start from? Were you like, were you fixing credit before that, or what? Yeah, yeah. So I, I definitely was uh, fixing credit, you know, for myself. You know, it, it stemmed from me, you know, running into you know the same old shit that everybody kind of go through. You pay mm. somebody, they don't fix your credit, and so mm. um, I was a software engineer. Um, and once I learned how to fix my own credit, mm. I kind of figured out that it wasn't that hard. Mm -hmm. You know, if I could do it, you know, I can, you know, I know somebody else can do it. If yeah. I can do it, <laughs> yeah. you can do it. So um, what I did was, you know, I, I took my software development skills mm -hmm. and merged it with the credit repair, you know, knowledge mm -hmm. and then created the software. What, what method did you use to create, I mean, to fix your credit? Uh, <laughs> back then it was like factual disputing. Sending off letters? Yeah. Yourself? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So now, with your software, uh, what method do you use? Uh, man, I got all of them. You know, I got consumer law. I got Metro 2. I got factual disputing. But the foundation of the software is factual disputing mixed with consumer law. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. How do you, how do you, okay, let's break this down. Um, your software. Let's just say someone went to, they, they, they buy your software. Yeah. Is it like an app? Like that you put on your computer, on your phone, what? Or just... So currently it's not a mobile app. That's, okay. that's next year. We're okay. working on that. But um, Website. It's a web application. Mm -hmm. Not a website. Web application. Web application. Um, what is the difference? Um, so a website is, is just basically like a landing page. You've yeah. got a couple of different pages. But a uh -huh. web application actually has a, a back end to it. Right. It has, you know, it um, has a database. It has a server side, you know, aspect to it. But it's still www. <laughs> right. Same shit. Okay. Same um, setup. Okay, when somebody goes on the web, what is it? Web credit fixer. No, no, <laughs> not website, okay. but web. Uh, what's the name you just gave it? It's not a website. Web application. Web application. Yeah, when somebody yeah. goes on the web application. www. What? Creditfixer.com. Creditfixer.com. Now, when they go on this website, they basically purchase it or yeah. sign up. Or so we have monthly subscriptions and annual subscriptions. Okay, okay. I choose a monthly subscription. Wow. Now, once I I, I subscribe. 
basically I get access to any any form of credit fixing? Correct. Credit so, fair? so the way it works is once you sign up, uh, you can sign up for free. I got a seven day trial. You can try it out. Uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> but uh, you get limited access to certain things once you sign up. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you purchase the software, whether monthly or annually, once you sign up, you import your credit report, mm -hmm. uh, input your personal information, you never have to input it again. It's going to automatically be imported into every dispute letter that you mm -hmm. generate. So what I, what I did was I have dispute letters, but also have um, dispute flows. So I, I have like a check system dispute flow. I have a bankruptcy dispute flow. Mm -hmm. I have a late payment dispute flow, uh, inquiry dispute flow. Mm -hmm. Right. So even if you didn't know how to dispute or yeah. send out letters or anything like that, uh -huh. you just follow the flow. Got you. Made simple for anybody. Made simple. I got video tutorials for almost every letter that's in there. So it basically explains it to you. Uh -huh. You know, it lets you know, like, why you're sending out this letter. Right. Yeah. OK, so let's <clears> say so all of it is letter based. It, do you have to send out the letters yourself or do um, you just. It's like an AI type of situation where it mails the letter off for you, do everything for you. You just put your information in, put your credit score in, and kind of almost everything. You feel me? Like I don't want it. I don't want to take you out of the picture, right? Yeah. It's very, very simple to use the software. I got options, so you can download it and take it to your local post office uh -huh. and mail it out. You can send it certified mail through uh, Credit Fixer Mailer. I got my own mailing service inside the system. Wow. Um, you can fax it. Mm -hmm. On the business side, we ain't talk about business yet, but you can you can send uh, via email to mm -hmm. your clients. Mm -hmm. They can mail it out, but we we'll talk about that another time. But uh, but yeah, um, man, I got options in there. Okay, let's <coughs> let's let's talk about consumer law for some because okay. consumer law is a little complicated. Very. It's not for the average person not that wants to increase the credit. So let's like say I wanted to use consumer law. Like how how is that process? Do I got to like study or? Cause that's a lot. You got to know the law if you, you're using consumer law. Like, right. So how did that work? Yeah. So uh, what I did was I kind of merged the laws into the letters. So what I did was I, I okay, okay. through my experience and people that I know in the space, mm -hmm. you know, um, that are, uh, how would you say, gurus as far as credit repair, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's not like a unique type of way to dispute. You just need to point out the errors mm -hmm. and let them know that you know that they are, you know, uh, that these are errors. Mm -hmm. See, most of the time people have no clue like, hey, I'm being violated here. Mm -hmm. Like this is not supposed to be reported this way or in right. this manner. So I have the consumer laws in there to actually point those things out. Mm -hmm. Like for late payment, 1666, uh, 15 USC 1666B, that's for late payments. Mm -hmm. You know, um, <clears throat> um, there's a whole bunch of laws in there. Um, that that I, I don't know all off the top of my head, but mm -hmm. but yeah. In your opinion, what would be the best method to <laughs> repair your credit? The, the the best, the fastest. Which one? That's a that's a controversial question because you know some people will argue consumer law, some people mm -hmm. argue Metro too. Mm -hmm. um, I always meet the people that like uh, do consumer law and they be like Metro two some bullshit. Or I meet people that do other methods like, nah, bro, that's a bullshit, man. Metro 2 is or consumer law, nah. You, so they all effective. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. they, they are all effective. You just need to learn or know how to leverage them and use them properly. Mm -hmm. And that's why I have all of them in my software. I, I didn't just go with consumer law. Mm -hmm. I didn't just go with factual disputing. Mm -hmm. Some people do that. But with mm -hmm. Credit Fix, I give you all the tools. It's like a toolbox. Like, you can use it if you want to. Yeah. Or you can use the Metro 2 dispute flows, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So... Um, <clears throat> You can mix them up if you want to. I mean, I don't necessarily recommend that, but right, 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 right. Um, the best one, I can't really honestly say, man. Uh, I'm not trying to be liberal with the answer, yeah, but yeah. yeah, like I got people that literally get results from Metro too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, some people don't know how to factually dispute, mm -hmm. you know, um, but in Credit Fixer, the software helps you understand how to do that. Like I got over 150 factual di dispute reasons that you can select from just to drop down. Mm -hmm. Drop down, right? With the laws, with the consumer laws in there, mm -hmm. right? Um, I also got a violations uh, report. So when you import your credit report, if you don't know how to read a credit report, yeah. Credit Fixer will analyze your credit report and find all the violations that's mm -hmm. being reported. Mm -hmm. Because what, the, what, the, what, what happens is these credit reporting agencies have to report in a certain uh, way or manner. Mm -hmm. 
compliantly. That's where, that's where you get Metro 2 compliance from, mm -hmm. right? So, um, <clears throat> so they have to uh, uh, report your information 100% accurately, fairly, and um, complete, mm -hmm. right? That's literally what the FCRA states. Mm -hmm. And when, so my software, I analyze your credit report and find out where it's incompleteness, where it's inaccurate, mm -hmm. and then you just, you know, point them out. Gotcha. And then, now, let's talk about, like, the process of you building out this. Well, first, who is this for? Is this for, like, the average consumer or is this someone that's trying to start a credit repair business? A business? Who is this for? It's a... Uh, both, actually. Mm -hmm. I started out. So the foundation of Credit Fix is for the consumer. Mm -hmm. Like I, I could have went the route like these other softwares where they focus solely on, uh, you know, B2B. That's like the credit repair companies and CROs and okay. stuff like that. Uh -huh. But I actually do have that aspect in there. I got Credit Fix or business in the software. Mm -hmm. Right. But the foundation of it <clears throat> is for the everyday consumer. That's who I'm trying to empower. Mm -hmm. Like I'm trying to affect a billion lives, a million lives. Mm -hmm. I can say billion because this ain't just a national thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to, uh, to, to, to Canada. Yeah. I'm going, I was in Kenya and they got credit out there. Kenya? Yes. So oh. That's, I'm going there. I didn't think they had credit in Africa. Is that like the first country or something? No, nah, man, listen, they got credit every, almost, almost everywhere. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Mm. But a lot, a lot of these, like I was in a coffee shop in Africa, coding. This was back in 20, 2019. I'm coding. He's uh -huh. like, what are you doing? I was showed him my software. He was like, yo, we have credit out here. Can you, can I use your software to fix my, fix my credit? Yeah. And I was like, at the time, I'm like, I don't know. The, 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 if Equifax or right, whatever, right, right, whatever right, service uses right. or maintains your system, I mean, y'all like, reports. I'm pretty sure they got like a different system out there, different. So, like, did it, did you send it to him? Did you help? I mean, did he use your. Nah, nah, he ain't use okay. it. Nah, nah, because, I mean, honestly, I don't know what he's right, doing. Right, right, right. I don't know that country's way of reporting uh -huh. and stuff like that. So. But you about to learn. Yeah, for eventually, sure. eventually. Sure. But Canada is next. <laughs> uh -huh. Canada, right now, Canada only uh, have TransUnion and uh, Exp Experian, I think, uh -huh. if I remember correctly. So, uh, man, I'm about to fly down there to Canada and see what's good. I would, too. On me. So, like, take me through the process of making this this platform, this, like, because this ain't no easy task. Not at all. You know what I mean? All. So, like, <clears throat> first, like, what motivated it? And then, like, take me through the steps of, like, because I couldn't do this. I ain't going to say I can't. Yeah. But it'll take me a long time. But yeah, um, damn. You want? All right. And, how, what, and when did you start this? <clears throat> I started building this back in 2017. 2017. 2017. Okay. That's when I started. That's what. And when when did it launch? It launched. It launched August of 2021. 2021. Yeah. See, listen, that's four years. You know, yeah. some people. Would have gave up, you know, like hey, if it don't happen for you now, you know, some people are like, man, fuck it. But four years, that's yeah. that's a hell of a grind. No, facts, facts. So what was like the first step of the process? First step was honestly, it was me just trying to I was fixing my own credit and I got tired of using Word documents. Mm -hmm. And so I was like copying and pasting my name in all these different Word documents because uh -huh, uh -huh. I had got templates. Yeah. Right. And I was like, okay. And I was doing that. So I was like, you know what? It's something in, in software engineering called dry. Don't repeat yourself. And so mm -hmm. knowing that, I'm like, you know what? Let me just create this PDF generator to where I can just input my name mm -hmm. and input the accounts that I want, mm -hmm. right? And I just built that and I was just cool with that. I was pushing out credit I mean, dispute letters yeah. for my family. Uh -huh. Yeah, and so I started there. That was like the first step. And then um, <clears throat> I started, like I, you know, once I figured out I could do this, like I'm getting results for myself and my family. I'm like, all right, let me start a credit repair company. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so I started looking at other softwares. I was like, dude, they got softwares out there. And I found them and I was like, all right, again, dry. Don't repeat yourself, was they it, already got it, it. Was it the CRC? I don't wanna say Nah, it was, uh, it was, uh, damn, what's his name? I ain't even finna plug them, nah. Yeah, I ain't I plugging ain't, none I of them. The <laughs> like, yeah, I CRC. got the best software. Facts, facts. <laughs> Come on. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, we keep going. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so um, I, I used this software and it was slow. It was really slow. And uh, being a software engineer, I didn't like how it was functioning. It was just mm -hmm. too much on, on the screen and just too many buttons everywhere. So I'm like, this is not user friendly. So 
I stopped using the software and then I started building on Credit Fixer again. Mm -hmm. I was like, let me make this a whole CRM because it honestly, what I did, you wasn't, I wasn't supposed to do. Like it takes like probably like a 15 man team to actually do what I actually did. So, mm -hmm. you know, you know, thank God God put it on my spirit to kind of take this idea and actually, mm -hmm. you know, concretize it and mm -hmm. make it something physical, mm -hmm. right? Um, because it was a lot of nights I didn't know what the, I didn't know what I was doing. I'm like, damn, how do I do this? How do I, you know, connect it to a uh, to this API or this API? How do mm -hmm. I, how am I gonna pull all pull pull all these credit reports in? That's when I learned that they had um, credit monitoring services. Because mm -hmm. I thought I had to go directly to TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax individually. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole nother different thing that you would have to do. So I tried to go that route. Um, luckily, I found credit monitoring services like mm -hmm. Identity IQ, Smart Credit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I was like, "Oh yeah, that made it easier." So I got those in there. I started there, um, and then I just slowly came up with the ideas. Like, what do people need? Like, if I'm a user, I started thinking about the people. Like, what would make this process easy for people? Because like, people fixing their credit is a really hard problem to solve. It's very difficult to solve that problem mm -hmm. because people will give up really quickly, and so. I'm thinking of taking away as much difficulty as possible, mm -hmm. but not handicap you. Right. I'm really trying to empower you so that you know what to do mm -hmm. so that you can go do the same thing that I did. Mm -hmm. So, um, man, I just slowly built it over the years, man. I was just up late at night. I would get off work because uh, I, I was working for a, a private company at the time. And um, uh I would get off work at, what, 5 p.m., get home around, like, 6.30, chill with my family around, like, 9, 9 p.m. to, like, 2, 3 a.m., mm -hmm. sometimes 4 a.m., I'm coding. I'm mm -hmm. up listening to Nip mm -hmm. getting to getting to it. Like, <laughs> you watch my stories, you will see, like, I really was coding this. Mm -hmm. Like, you can see the code. Like, you watch my stories on IG, I was really up doing it. Listening to music, just getting it going. But Nip was a very a big inspiration mm -hmm. to me, you know, doing it. We from the same area um, in, in, in California. Um, so, um, yeah, I just kept building, man. And one of the things that I do want to say is that the reason why I didn't go hire those 15 different people, one, because I didn't have the money to do it, yeah. right? But two, um, I wanted to show people that look like me that you could build something from an idea and you can build it to the degree of like Google and Facebook and, and, mm -hmm. and, and all these big companies, mm -hmm. corporations. So I want to show people like, yo, you could do this shit. Mm -hmm. Stop being afraid. Fear is going to be there. But when you, whenever you succumb to fear, you just, that's it. Like, it's okay to fear, mm -hmm. but not challenging your fear. Because mm -hmm. trust me, I was afraid. Like, man, it was like, damn, I don't know how I'm going to do this shit. The future is very scary. You know, oh, yeah. The unknown, you know, like thinking about like, okay, you have an idea in your head and it's just an idea, but now, now you got to put the steps towards to make it come to life. Yeah. And some people, well, like this, this, for example, I want to do a podcast and didn't know like what type of podcast I wanted, didn't know like where it was going to take me, but I did it. You know what I'm saying? I started yeah. just working on it and you see, you walk in these months, you're like, damn. Love you. Know you know what I mean? And it started off like this, you know what I mean? And yeah. then I'm thinking, of, like now I'm thinking on the level of like MTV, like having my own network, BET yeah. or something like that. So like you, it's just an idea. You just never know how far, you just got to take them steps. But the grind is real though. That's Absolutely. Right. So how did you feel though when it finally just like completed? Like, Man, man, I, I cried during the process and I, I, I cried. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all, man. I, it was a lot, of, it was some tears shed through, throughout this whole process, but it dawned on me um, a couple months ago, man, I, I, I really had to give myself a pat on the back. Like, mm -hmm. damn, dog, you did this shit. Mm -hmm. Like, you really did this shit without a lot of help. You didn't get no, I didn't, man, I funded out my own pocket, bro. I went yeah. into debt doing this. And it reminded me of the dude that built uh, Calendly. Mm -hmm. Dude took out a second mortgage and went into debt, you know, uh, took out loans. And now he sold, he sold that for two point, two point something billion dollars. That's what I'm on with this software. So look, we had a conversation on the phone. You was like, yeah. somebody offered you in the beginning stages, right? Uh, let me get this right. I think it 50 was million. 50 M's. Yeah. And you declined. 
I declined. Yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah. So, uh, so I br- it's funny I bring up Calony. So I'm a. Uh, I had this was last year. Yeah, it was last year, 2002. I had moved to Atlanta, back to Atlanta, mm-hmm. and um, uh, my boy from Tuskegee. Uh, shout out my dog Henry. He uh, he was going to grad school, and, and they they school had like a. a a room inside of Atlanta Tech Village. Mm-hmm. And so he was like, hey dog, I think you this this would be a good spot for you to come to. It's a lot of you know tech companies in here. So I I, I go and I interview for it, right? And they love it. And they was like, they actually told me, they was like, bro, you really like passed the MVP stage. Like you, you really got something here. Mm-hmm. And so as I'm talking to different like investors, because there's investors in there, it's like an mm-hmm. incubator, right? Mm-hmm. So um, they did allow me to, you know, join the uh, Atlanta Tech Village. Um and so I sit down with one investor and um, he was like, man, you really got something. I, I, I think this is very big. And um, he was like, how much you want for it? <laughs> he was like, I was like, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I already knew. I already knew my number. He was like, I, he said, how? What was you your s- number? <laughs> 7.8 billion. Keep going. Yeah. So he, uh, he was like, man, I, I would like to, you know, buy it from you. And I was like, okay, what's your offer? He said, 50 million. And I was like, nah. He was like, are you serious? And he was like, how much would you sell it for? I said, $7.8 billion if I was to sell it. Mm-hmm. He said, what the fuck you get that number for? <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, better, hey, you better he than like, me, bro. You, right. said, you said 50 what? 50. <laughs> but nah, that's your baby though. Like you, you, you didn't Blood, sweat, and tears, you know, so I get it, you know, yeah. like that, your number is your number, your price is your price, so, yeah. hey man, pay me, so go ahead. <laughs> Credit Karma sold theirs for $7.6 billion, and Credit Karma ain't doing half of what I'm about, what I'm doing, yeah. and what I'm about to do. Mm-hmm. Like, see, uh, this not just a, just a credit repair software, that's just the foundation. See, uh, the software was built with like real true love, man, for people and empowering people, yeah. and I'm, I'm connecting, I'm, I'm connecting, you know, businesses with this software. I don't even really want to go into too much because this is a big ass podcast and I know, mm-hmm. but it don't even matter. I'm going I'm to I'm talk about some of it, man. Um, Cause it's in the works anyways, but you know, being able to connect with, you know, BMW realtors, mm-hmm. you know, people like sort of like a LinkedIn type of deal. Yeah. Yeah. To mm-hmm. where they can connect with you, you can connect with them. And you know, that has always from the, from the inception of me building the software, those thoughts went into place. And so because I'm a, I was like a senior uh, software engineer, I architect software for companies and stuff. I thought about these things beforehand mm-hmm. because when, when it comes to software, how you architect the thing determines how, what you can build on top of it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so um, I seen like, I looked at some of these software, I was like, oh, they can't do this, they can't do that. Okay, cool, they, it's a cap for them. They don't know it yet, but I do. <clears throat> why not? Why not take the fifty M and run? Why not take the fifty mil and I don't know, start something else? Like it's it's yeah. Why wait? Why wait? Who knows how long the seven point eight gonna take? Yeah. Why not take the fifty mil now and just go do something else instead of waiting? And it might not ever come. The seven point eight might not ever come. But the 50 mil is right here in your face guarantee. Why not take the deal right when it's in front of you? I'm, 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 I'm willing to take that, that chance. I'm really willing to take that, that time. It took uh, um, Credit Karma 12 years to get to that. Damn. 7.8 billion. But they was making bread, yeah. you know, throughout the process. Mm-hmm. You know, they was connected with, you know, different credit cards and stuff. And mind you, like, I'm doing the same, I'm doing the same thing. Right, right, so right, right. I'm gonna make my bread along the way also. But, you know, for me, it wasn't, it wasn't, it truly wasn't about the money for me. You know, I in, actually really enjoy, I enjoy what I'm doing. Like, mm-hmm. that's what kept me up at like 4 a.m., 5 a.m., knowing I gotta go to work the next morning. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I enjoy doing this because it, it ain't about the money for me. Anybody that know me, that really know me, they like, it ain't about the money. Like, I love empowering people. I really want to leverage this as a way to show people, like, you really got this shit. Mm-hmm. You really could do this. Mm-hmm. And anything that you want to do, you know, and this was my, you know, this was a test for me. You know, like I said, it was, I shed tears throughout this process. You know, I had fear. I didn't know what I was going to do sometimes. But every time you see, like, I found a way. And it's like, now, like, 
I have no fear. I have no, and you're going to get to this point too. I have no like inkling of something that I can't put in the software. Mm -hmm. Let's say that if I want to put something in there, I know I can put it in there. Yeah. Like that, that's a great feeling to have, you know? And that's what I want other people to feel, like, like me. Like, I feel like I'm a god, like Kanye said. I'm a god, dog. <laughs> you feel me? Like, I can put whatever. I'm the most innovative software in the game. I got chat GPT in there. Nobody's have ever done that. Like, like I put chat GPT in there. And I just, that was one of my throwaway moves. Because mm. <laughs> like I said, like, I can do this. Like, man. Man, you speak very, very passionate about this. I could tell, like, bro, blood, sweat, and tears went to this. Yeah. And you really, really believe in it. Well, I mean, you, you also have an example, too, you know, Credit Karma. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, if Credit Karma wasn't there to show you, like, hey, it was possible, like, yo, like, we did this, so, and you got the same type of system, mm. you know it's possible. Yeah. But you speak with, like, conviction. Yeah. Speaking on, uh, on God's, um, you have this tattoo, right? What, is, what does that mean? Oh, Star in the Crescent. Hey, what does that mean? It means uh, freedom, justice, and equality. What is that a religion? Is that based off of religion? Yeah. So um, I'm I'm born into the nation of Islam, and mm. uh, you know, uh, Honorable Vince Louis Farrakhan has been a huge, you know, factor in my life and me, you know, even being the way that I am, you know, caring for people and and just, you know, belief, you know, even just you know knowing that you know. I'm a God when I, when I, you could be a God in anything that you do, you mm -hmm. know, not just me, but all of us, not mm -hmm. that we are the God, the mm -hmm. definite article of God, mm -hmm. but we are little gods. Like we have the ability to actually create. Mm -hmm. God gave us that power to do that. We can take an idea, something that's already real mm -hmm. and concretize it and bring it into, you know, reality, like this watch. Somebody had an idea and created a watch. Mm -hmm. Somebody created the mechanism in. It all started from an idea, this mic, mm -hmm. you know? Look at you, man, you didn't create like- it's crazy. This from your mind, it's and you crazy. put it together, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, hey, what was the question? I kinda got yeah, I mean, away. you were saying it. Um, <laughs> 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 no, we are creators, though. I, I truly believe that, I truly believe that. Like, we are gods, not, not the God, but we are gods. God right. put us here on this planet to create. Yeah. Like, basically just gave us free land, and. And I think about it like, yo, how the hell did we even create all this stuff? How did we figure out like all these herbs and, you know what I'm saying, botany and, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying, how did we create, how we even thought of buildings and it, it get real technical when you think about it. Yeah. But I want to ask you this about the Quran. Like, okay. you know, how you, have you read the Bible? Or yeah. something? the Bible yeah. and the Quran, does the Quran start off how the Bible start off, like how God created the world and, you know, on the seventh day it is and. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the Quran came after the Bible, right? And so the Quran verifies the Bible. Verifies the Bible. Yeah. In what way? Say that. I, I, so I, you know, you so you got all these prophets. All of these, all of these prophets came with messages. You know, they say that Prophet Muhammad is the last prophet. You know, of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. You know, because you didn't need to prophesy about nothing else. You didn't need no more prophets. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus talked about God coming after him, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, growing up, I. I my grandmother was uh, the lead choir singer uh, at her church. My grandfather was a deacon. And uh, so I would go to the mosque and I would go to the church. Mm. Yeah, so, you know, I always read the Bible, I always read the Quran. Mm. And so, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm glad we're having this conversation, man. I love to having these conversations because mm. it's, 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 it's really intriguing to me. Uh, but, um, yeah, so you know, my just growing up having those two understandings, man, of the Bible and the Quran, I, they verify each other. You know, a lot of things that, like in the Quran, we got a whole chapter on on Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Uh -huh. It's called Mary Yom is it, in is Arabic. It, is it the same story? No, no, it talks about the woman. She's the most. She's so <clears throat> in the Quran that. She is the epitome of womanhood. Mm -hmm. So that whole that whole chapter is about women and 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 just the uh, the mother of Jesus. That that's the woman that birthed, you know, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is talked about till this day. You know, a whole religion, you know, surrounding him, 
right? Not that he told you to believe in him. He said, believe, he said follow me in the worship of God. Mm -hmm. He never said that he was God, but he said, but technically, when you saw him, you see God. Because he didn't do his will. He did God's will. Mm -hmm. That's why he was able to say, when you see me, you see the Father. Mm -hmm. Because not my will be done, but thy will be done. Not meaning, meaning he had a will, but he suppressed his own will to do God's will. So when you saw him, you saw God. Mm -hmm. He wasn't doing his will. And so those are... He was a he was a he was a perfect example of us to us human beings to realign us back into our nature, mm -hmm. which is God. Mm -hmm. Why do you think people pray to Jesus? Is that how do you feel about that? Uh, I mean, you could. I really do, I think it's technically I feel like it's out of order because Jesus never actually told you to pray to him. Mm hmm. You know, and Jesus prayed himself as well, mm -hmm. you know, so he wasn't praying to himself. That's kind of a little arrogant, but, you know, um, <clears throat> he never prayed to himself. He prayed to God as well, you know, and um, I mean, I really don't feel no type of way. That's, that's people's understanding of what they believe, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, I, I, believe, I believe that, you know, Jesus taught us to follow him in the worship of God and pray to God, the Father. You know, as he called him. What made you choose the nation over Christianity? If you grew up on both, yeah. what made you go that way? Yeah, so the truth would defend itself. You know, you could put a clean glass next to a dirty glass. You're going you, you, you to mm -hmm. choose, right? And so with the, with the teachings, you know, um, under the Honorable Miss Louis Farrakhan, you know, most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and through the Honorable Miss Louis Farrakhan, it was, it just made so much sense to me, man. I remember like, you know, I'm from Compton. We would drive to Marino Valley to my cousin's house and stuff. So I was like an hour and a half, two hours away. And um, um, I couldn't go to sleep, man. I would just hear the minister talking like, my dad be looking in the rear view mirror like, he said, you still up? All my brothers and sisters knocked out. It's eight of us, right? I'm the only one up rolling, just hearing the minister just talk. And you know, I mean, you, you man. Man, I love you, brother minister. You know, he's what, 90 years old now? Yeah, and uh, he's still teaching, man. He's still on his mission, still on his job, but. This is Muhammad. No, Honorable Miss Louis Farrakhan. Farrakhan is 90 years old? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Whoa, okay, all right. <laughs> nah, he, he, he doing his thing. Dang. Yeah. I, mean, I remember when he was like sick at a point. He was like, man, they trying to kill me. They did, they put, uh, a whole lot of radiated seeds in his body. How they do that? So he he actually went into surgery because he had cancer. Uh huh. And so what they did was they put like ten times the amount of radiated seeds that they were supposed to put in a human being. Mm -hmm. They literally was trying to kill him. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean obviously he's still here, but yeah. you know he's talked about this in, in a lot of his messages where. You know, he don't even, most people don't know this, and I don't even want to share it on here, but <clears throat> that's okay. He talked about it, you know, but this part he don't even have no more. They really burnt his stomach what you, up. What do you mean you don't have it? Like, it's, what, it's not there. What is it? I mean, I don't know exactly, but right. I know that it's not there. Wow. But, you know, I remember him talking about it. He said when he was on his deathbed, you know, he was not... Uh, angry or anything like that, mm -hmm. you know. He said, "He said, why not me? You know, why not me go mm -hmm. through this? You know, Jesus went through it. Mm -hmm. Why not me? Mm -hmm. You know." So he, he, in his mind, he's like, "Man, if it's your will, Allah or God, then it's my will too." So be. So be. Mm -hmm. And so you know, obviously, Allah, you know, allow him to get through that. You know, but they definitely tried to kill him. Have you met him? Have you been around him? I have been around the minister, yes. Yeah. I haven't met him personally. Yeah. I, um, I've sat, I've been on posts on his uh, door a lot. What is it, what, what, what type of energy like do you feel when you're around that? I know it's something like very strong and spiritual and like kind of like, um, almost like it's unreal. It is, uh -huh. it is. Man, it's almost like this man reading your thoughts, to be honest with you. Uh -huh. And uh, man, the minister is such a, He's a he's a fun person to be around. Mm -hmm. Like the stories I heard, yeah. Um, um, 
man, he's a tireless worker, man. He's always giving knowledge, man. He's always teaching, but he's funny, though. Mm. Bro, Minister is hilarious. I mean, I mean, you name it. Like, you you be surprised who has come to visit him at his home. Eminem, Rick Ross, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Kendrick Lamar, uh, who else? Uh, a lot of you'd be surprised how many white people come to the minister to get hmm. get seek seek advice and mm-hmm. seek counsel. Mm-hmm. Man, uh, you name them, man. Down the list, all of them. You name somebody, I can probably be like, yeah, yep. <clears throat> How's up, man? Um, what is the difference between the nation and being <coughs> Muslim? Um. So let me let me let me say this. So a lot of people think that Islam started with Prophet Muhammad, when that's not correct. Islam started with, with God Himself. Like you look at the trees, you look at the sun, you look at the <clears throat> the moon. Mm-hmm. You know, all of those things are in submission to Allah, to God. So it didn't start with Prophet Muhammad. Mm-hmm. Prophet Muhammad perfected Islam as a religion. Not that it is a religion, but he perfected it as a religion to help humanity realign themselves back into their own nature. See, trees have a nature and they're in submission. You see how they ain't bothering nobody, they ain't hurting nobody. They doing what, what they were created to do in their nature. And so the sun is right there. It's doing its thing. You know the sun going to be there. It's doing its thing. It's in submission. So it's at peace. And so Islam means peace. And so the only... um. You know, people who are not at I mean, the only creation that's not at peace right now is the human being. We have fallen away from our own nature. And so, drink some of this water. So, um, you know. Um, what do you think our, nat- our nature is? God. To be like God, be at peace, so, create. So you said we've fallen away from that. We have fallen away from that. <clears throat> We live in a world where the current rulers of this earth is ruling, and you obviously see they're not ruling well. I mean, you just look at America. Mm-hmm. You know, this civilization only been here for what six hundred some years, mm-hmm. and it's all it's already falling. You know, um, you had you got Egypt. You know, them civilizations was lasting longer than this, but that's because the foundation and from the inception of which it was built. <clears throat> It's causing it to have an end, uh, end date. Mm-hmm. Like, so, you know, it's like leaving the milk out. Like, you didn't properly set it up. You didn't properly handle it. So it's spoiling, you mm-hmm. know. It wasn't rooted in truth. It was rooted in bloodshed and murder. And now they're trying to fix it on top of it. And the foundation is already shaky. It's mm-hmm. not rooted in truth. It's not rooted in peace. So it's not going to last. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, you ask me, like, what's the difference between, you know, you know, Islam in the East and Islam in the West. See, we believe that God came to us, the lost found, you know, people of God. Came to us as the nation or came to? The Western Hemisphere, mm-hmm. the people in the Western Hemisphere, specifically us. Like if you read the, the Bible where God is talking to Abraham, he said, your seed will be <clears throat> enslaved to a people in a nation that not their own. They can't speak their own language. That literally happened to a people. Nowhere in the world where you got black people that's displaced, taken from where they once were. Not to say that we weren't inhabitants here because we were inhabited, uh, habitating the West already. But they brought up people to the West and Europeans came, took our language, stripped us. We couldn't read for 300 years. So you got people who are grown 50, 60, not able to read. If you read, you was killed. Mm. So Islam in the East couldn't come save us. It has been it had to be a specialized teaching mm-hmm. that could raise us. Mm-hmm. The mentally dead people in the West. I'm talking about the Western Hemisphere. I'm talking about where you from? You from Haiti? No, my people from Haiti. From Haiti. Mm-hmm. See your people from Haiti. See, they didn't speak French. Right. Nah. Mm-hmm. See, all our stuff was stripped from us. They made us lower than the animals. And so we needed a teaching that could raise us up. A wake up message. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was a specialized teaching that could wake us up. A lion got to wake up a lion, you know? And so Mm -hmm. 
Mass mm-hmm. fraud, Muhammad taught the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for three and a half years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, after those three years, he left him and an Honorable Elijah Muhammad took that. A man who only went to the third grade of school, I believe. Third grade of school, teaching us how to eat to live, what foods to eat, how, how, <clears throat> how fast thought travel, 24 billion miles per second, how far the earth is, from, how far the sun is from the earth. You know, how much the uh, earth weighs? Six, six trillion tons followed by 21 ci- ciphers or 21 zeros with the circumference of the earth. 24,896 <laughs> miles in circumference, diameter, 7,926 <laughs> miles. These are things that a third grade grader is teaching us. So <clears throat> he's teaching us about ourselves. We live on this planet. The earth belongs to the righteous, not to some religion, not to some... Uh, Islam or, or uh, quote unquote Islam or Christianity or Judaism. No, the earth belongs to the righteous. And so these religions are designed to guide us and realign us back into, you know, our way of being, our nature. Mm-hmm. And you, you know, obviously you, in all religions, you got those who are corrupt because men and women are in them. We have to be raised to a certain degree to where, you know, it's a purity in what we speak in. You said how to eat. Eat to, wait, how to eat to live? That's the name of the book. Yeah, um, is that based around um, being Muslim, or is that just who wrote that? Anubi Elijah Muhammad. Okay, nineteen. Can, can you explain how how to <coughs> eat to live? So the because Anubi- some people are living to eat, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So the Anubi Elijah Muhammad taught us that we should eat one meal a day, and a lot of people might look at that like, what? One meal a day? I can't eat one meal a day. But you actually can, you know, you just mm-hmm. nutrition, you nutritionally deficient. You've been eating pop tarts and you know drinking Gatorades and just eating all this plastic food that really has no nutritional value. So you always hungry. Yeah. But when you eat the right foods, he taught us to eat the right foods at the right time. He taught us what food to eat, what foods not to eat. You know. What foods not to eat? Mm-hmm. Tell me. Scavengers, pork. You know, you know, even the Bible tells us and the Quran tells us not to eat pork, but. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> that's actually the only thing that's forbidden for us to eat. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, scavengers. Um, scavengers he said we can eat what, like shrimp, or shrimp, uh-huh. crawfish. You know, bottom feeders. Never. No. Nah, you're not supposed to. It's not good for your body. But you know, he taught us that you know your stomach is like an engine, right. and the more you run the engine, then it wears itself out. Mm-hmm. All food has bacteria in it. All food, and and when you've eaten too many times per day and too often. You never get your body the ability to actually get rid of these toxins and bacteria out of your body. And so you start seeing it in your, your bones and your skin and your face. You start going gray early, mm-hmm. all these different things. Like, so he taught us that we can eat all fruit, but we can't eat all vegetables. He taught us, he taught us that we shouldn't even eat too many raw vegetables or fruits. Like I juice, right? Mm-hmm. You juice. Mm-hmm. But you need... You can't drink too much fruit juice. Why? Because it doesn't allow your body to actually process it right. If you, like I had a homegirl who was um, raw vegan Mm -hmm. and she had to change her diet because she was uh, iron deficient and her body wasn't processing food right anymore. So she had to go to vegetarian and start more cooked food. But he taught us that you shouldn't eat too many raw foods. Mm -hmm. You should cook your your vegetables and cook your uh, uh. yeah, cook your vegetables. What vegetables we can't we can't eat? Uh, <laughs> kale is actually one of them. Kale is a uh, man-made or something like. Nah, awesome. see, Doctor Sebi go deep into all that. Uh-huh. I, I'm not sure, but um, <clears throat> and, and actually, Doctor Sebi he he sat at the table. I don't Elijah Muhammad, and that's where he got his start. Oh wow! Yeah, he was in the nation. Was yes, and stopped. Yeah, hmm. I need to look that up. Yeah. Uh, okay, so what time of the day should should y'all be should we? Four, four, four or six PM between those two hours. I thought I thought you're supposed to eat at uh when the sun is at the highest, like at noon. That's when you're supposed to break fast. Mm. No. They eat one meal a day. So if you eat one meal a day, that's twenty four hours from the last time you ate. <clears throat> but the best time to eat is four between four and six PM, mm-hmm. according to Anu Elijah Muhammad. And whew, what are you what are you eating? Um, right now I'm actually fasting. I just actually came off a three day fast. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, I just, just, I ate yesterday, but I'm actually 
fasting today just all juices. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, juice, coffee. But for the most part, man, I don't cook no meat in the house. No meat. Nah, no meat. I, I do eat meat though. But you don't cook it. I like me a good little wagyu. No wagyu. <laughs> so you say you don't cook it yeah. in the house. Why not? Why? What, what's the reason behind that? Uh, just to kind of stay off meat. I'm trying. Honestly, really want to get off meat completely because right. meat is just not for the body, anyways. Mm-hmm. You know, we this body's not designed to be eating meat. Mm-hmm. You don't live a long life eating meat. Mm-hmm. You know, he taught us, he actually taught us to eat. If you ate one meal every other day, you would not get sick. Every other day. Every other day. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do, uh, I do Ramadan every year. Uh, while I was in prison, man, I met a bunch of brothers, man. Yeah. Um, I never converted, but I was, we was close, man. And um, I decided to do Ramadan and fast. And the first year was like the hard, I didn't even think I made it through the first year. I just kind of like, after like two weeks, I was like, bro, I can't do it. <laughs> it was just hard. But I was like, you know what? Next it's year, process. I'm determined. It's a process. I'm going to make it. So this is like my fifth, I think either fifth or one of my sixth year Ramadan. Yeah. Um, what what does Ram? no, not Ramadan. What does fasting do for you? Man, fasting. And why is fasting so important? Man, so. <clears throat> Who that? Oh, Alex, what's up? You want to you wanna go buy something? You want to go upstairs? Nigga, go ahead. <laughs> What's up? How you doing? What's happening, Chief? Uh, Ain't shit chilling, man. Um. Okay, yeah. So, why is fasting so important? Man, fasting <clears throat> prolongs your life. It keeps you here longer. Mm-hmm. Um. It you know nowadays scientists are saying that they call it intermittent fasting, right? Yeah. Um. And uh, but basically they say like it, your body heals itself. Mm-hmm. Your body is designed to actually cure itself and heal itself mm-hmm. from ailments. Food is designed to actually be your medicine, mm-hmm. right? And um, <clears throat> you know, for me, it's like if you really think about it, your body only needs nutrients. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but you know, for me, fasting, you know, gives me clarity. It keeps me looking younger. Mm-hmm. Um, it keeps my brain, you know moving fast, you know, when I don't eat, you know, I I, I get more spiritual, more creative. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I don't know why it's like that. Yeah. It's something about when you fast, like it's just something that just get activated. Yeah, it's yeah. something that like a power just, just turn on, like, okay, I got extra strength. You would think that I would get weaker because I ain't got no food. Right. This is what the average human thinks, like, nah, I'm fasting, bro, I need food. You actually really don't need food. I try to eat less as possible right now, like, yeah, yeah. and I be trying to watch my weight, because, like, when you don't eat, like, I, I do the, the, the one meal a day, but then I find myself losing weight, you know yeah. what I mean? And I was like, all right, let me, let me beef up real quick, and then, so, like, I understand the, the, the process. I understand, like, the concept <laughs> of just less food as possible and um, no meat. I'm definitely not. I'm done with meat. The only time I'm going to eat meat, because I did have a, a a situation when I was in Haiti, mm. and we bought a chicken off the side of the road. It was live, and they went back and prepared it. And oh. when they came back and with the meal, and when I ate the chicken, it was chicken I never felt before. Yeah. I say felt Man. because the chicken kind of fed my soul, and I kind of <laughs> felt the, the 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 I don't know. I felt the soul, the the, the life of the chicken like, like right. feeding me. You know what I'm saying? It was just different. I was like, yo, I'll never yeah. eat chicken again in America. It was just too different. Bro. And when you look at chicken wings, it's like this big. Like, what chicken's looking like this? I don't mess with the wings. Uh, they be thick. Man, like, come nah. on, man. Like, this shit from J.R. Cr- not J.R. Crooked. Like, I don't want to shout out to Rick Ross. Wingstop. Like, them big <laughs> chicken. Like, uh-uh, man. Like, but what, what I get from- What you doing over there, Ross? Nah. <laughs> what I get from you, though, like, discipline. Yeah, and, strive to you know, be. like, it, 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 it it stems from the religion, but it also carries on to other areas of your life. Like I think that with what you got going on with the credit fixer, like that took a lot of discipline, bro. Oh, Cause yeah. you can get distracted and you know, like you, that idea could have just been an idea I had like a couple years ago and I never yeah. acted on it. But yeah. you, it, you have a lot of discipline, bro. I, 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 I got quite a bit of discipline, man. I'm striving in different areas, right? Yeah. Like in this area, I'm very disciplined, mm-hmm. you know. And like, work or religion, which one? Oh yeah. Both. Yeah, okay. yeah, like, like, there's a lot of opportunities out here, like, but I had to stay in my lane, stay laser focused, like, mm-hmm. in order to, you know, build this thing, because like, it's people that got different, you know, 
uh, Amazon, you know, had Amazon stores and stuff like that. Yeah. A lot of that came up along the process to where it was like, damn, if I, nah, I can make a bag doing that because I'm, I'm, I'm very knowledgeable when it comes to like software, internet and all that. But I'm just like, nah, let me stay here. Yeah. That takes a lot of focus, man. And, you know, a lot of people can get tricked off they, you know, they mission by mm -hmm. jumping and jumping and jumping. Nah, you mm -hmm. got to learn your peaks and valleys, your summer, winter, spring, fall. So you don't fall off, you know, mm. you know. <clears throat> let me, let me, let me, let's break this misconception. Um, the misconception is that Muslims can have multiple wives. And um, I wanted to hear your thoughts on that. <laughs> I'm bringing yeah. it down to the people. So in the Quran, it says that um, you can have up to four wives. Four. But... But damn, but had to been a but. One is better for you if you but knew. Excuse me. The Quran says you can have up to four, but one is better. Uh huh. Like it's they letting you know it was prescribed that you can have up to four, and but one is better. Uh huh. Because you know when it comes to women, man, I was taught that men are the maintainers of women. Mm -hmm. Meaning like you maintain a woman, not that you, you know, she don't have her own, she can't have her own job and stuff like that. But no, nah, it's on you to maintain her, you know, nails, hair, like that's on you, a, a security, home, mm -hmm. you know, bills, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and, you know, that's really on us. Mm -hmm. But if you got to do that for four women, most, most men can't do that. Most men don't even have the pockets to even maintain mm -hmm. one. One. Let alone four. So a lot of people, they so focused on, and a lot of it is focused on sex. Everybody just, you know, trying, right, to, right, right, trying right. to have multiple women so that they can, you know, have multiple babies. And bro, that's not wise. That's not a very wise thing to do, mm -hmm. you know. And you dealing with, you can't make all the women happy. Somebody going to be happy. You just mm -hmm. don't have enough of you around to mm -hmm. even do that. Mm -hmm. Don't play yourself out here. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying don't don't play yourself, you know. And I'll say this just to just to kind of give it some context, you know. The reason why that was even prescribed, I mean, notice I'm saying prescribed because in the Quran at that time, I mean, in the in the time when that was happening, the men had went off to war and most of the men died in 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 the battle, right? Mm -hmm. And so now you got a surplus of women, mm -hmm. you got. Uh, what do you call it when a woman is, you know, uh, widow? Widows. You got all these widows and children and stuff. So, Prophet Muhammad prescribed like you can have up to four, and a lot of these men was just taking care of these women, not even, you know, you know, sexing sexually. them down and all that because that's the, that's my man's that's my man's wife, mm -hmm. you know, and that's his children. Mm -hmm. I need to be there, you know, mm -hmm. to support them and you know, be in their life. So, um, a lot of that's that's how it was. That's why it was prescribed in the Quran. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, most men, you know, take that on and they don't really understand, like, what they doing. Because mm -hmm. you really can mess a lot of women up like that. You mess up a lot of families because you're not there. You can't even provide the time for the children. Mm -hmm. you 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 putting too much stress on one side, mm -hmm. you know? Now, how many wives you going to have? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stick to one, my 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 one. <laughs> does it does it say does it say <laughs> at, at uh, what type of man you have to be, what you have to do to have these four wives, or it just you automatically does it have rules in place? Yeah, um, I never honestly I never got too deep into that because that was never like my mission to have uh -huh. multiple wives. Like mm -hmm. that was never my mission and. You know, but one thing I always knew was I knew I wanted to. So I got a lot of female cousins and I always like said to them, like, one day I'm going to take care of y'all. Not that I'm going to be sleeping with them, nothing yeah. like that, obviously. But, you know, I always had that ambition because, you know, some of them are single mothers now, mm -hmm. you know. And it's like, man, these suckers, they ain't even they had you had babies with these suckers. And they ain't even, you know, mm -hmm. maintaining you. They ain't mm -hmm. doing this type of stuff. And these children are suffering. And so, like, I always wanted to be in the position to where, like, yo, y'all need some, I got you. And I'm, I'm finally getting to that space, you know, in my mm -hmm. life to where, like, I can, like, you know, support my family and stuff like that. But um, to to your question, like, I'm sticking with one, man. Um, was that the question? 
Who was Shit, that? I don't know. Shit. I asked you how many you was going to get. Oh, you how many you was yeah, going to yeah, get? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm uh, going to be honest with you, though. I'm, I'm going to say this. I did... Uh, nah, I ain't finna go there. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's hear it, buddy. <laughs> what happened? What, 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 what? <laughs> nah, man. Um, damn, my wife going to kill me. But, you know, she she always wanted me to be a thousand. But, um, man, you know, I, I've been married for 10 years. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it was a time, like, me and my wife were separated. And, uh, man, I actually called myself, you know, you know, trying to marry another woman while we were separated. And, uh, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and the thing about it, the woman wanted me, the other one, this is why I know that one is better if you but new. Like, my wife, she, she's so dope, man. She held me down, but, you know, it was just a, you know, it's a point we were in our, our marriage. But she, um, oh, girl, I told her, I was like, man, I'm going to always take care of this woman. She, she birthed my children, and whatever she needs, she always going to get. And, but the um, other woman wanted me to completely leave her. And, like, hmm. she like, you a king. Like, she said all the right shit, right? But, um... I was like, nah, like, and she just couldn't handle not being, 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 not being number one. Number one. And so these are the things that some men have faced. So I just, you know, told her like, man, we just gonna have to dead that. Mm-hmm. And uh, because <clears throat> my wife was hot at the time, obviously she was like, you know, had this conversation with me, even though we separated and all mm-hmm. this type of stuff, you know. Do you have to have the conversation? Do the wife have to You agree? should. You should. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, these they, see people take this religion stuff and they 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 forget humanity. Mm. Mm. Like a lot of people forget that these people like women have feelings just like you. They mm. read the Quran just like you. See, and 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 this is what I'm saying about like the East, the teachers in the East, that's a culture thing, cultural thing. Like you got Muslims all over the world. You, you got say Muslims. East. You mean like Africa? That part? I'm talking about the like the Arab Muslims Arab who Muslims. profess like Islam started with them. And, and no, no, no is, disrespect to West is more Americanized. Than that. Yeah, it, it's a totally different culture. Mm-hmm. Like obviously we got Muslims in the East and the West all over the world, yeah. but you got to understand religion and culture. Mm-hmm. You know, um, like some cultures in Islam they practice Sharia law. Like you steal, you get your hand cut off. <laughs> like. To this day. To this day. That's the law. Wow. You still, we gonna cut your hand off. You still again, we gonna cut your mm. leg off. <laughs> and then you still, <laughs> yeah, and just. As long as you don't cut my penis <laughs> off, man, we is good to go, dog. <laughs> but, you, but the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, you can't take humanity out of religion. You can't just follow Mm-hmm. Law all the time. Mm-hmm. And that's why Jesus came with, when he came, they were saying, you breaking the laws of Moses because he was given, like, he, they was throwing stones. He was like, the first person who didn't uh, uh, sin, cast first. Mm-hmm. So he was like, because a woman had committed adultery, but he was given her grace and mercy. They didn't know that. They only knew the law of Moses, which was like the law, like, boom, you do this, you got to do that. Mm-hmm. So when Jesus came, they was mad at Jesus because he was coming with a different version of like uh-huh. teaching. Mm-hmm. So I say that to say, you know, like even when it comes with these four rides, like in the nation, minister said like, he better not catch none of us with, a, with multiple wives. We don't practice that. We don't practice that way. But it's, it's written. It is written. But why would he say that? See, when you raising up a people, and the people have not reached a certain degree of understanding, then mm-hmm. you can corrupt yourself because you do things out of season. You do things out of understanding. Like the Quran is not wrong, but when you understand the history of the Quran, why it was prescribed, but it also tells you like one is better if you but new. It's not saying that it's, it's, it is lawful for you to have multiple, multiple wives. Mm-hmm. It's lawful in, in, in Islam. You can, but the minister talk, told us, the believers, he not, you can if you want to, mm-hmm. but he's telling us, like, hey, we, we're not practicing that because where we're at, we're not ready for that. Most of us aren't. Mm-hmm. 
and in this nation that he has raised us up. Like he he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He not we not. So I want to make this clear. This ain't no uh, what do you call them things where it's like what you say go. Um, what them what them. Um. <clears throat> <laughs> but you know what I'm yeah. saying. Y'all get what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. But um, um, so this ain't that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many things that he said that, you know, I didn't do, you know. But when I did it, I, I saw like, damn, you know, I should have took that guidance, that wisdom that he taught us. And, you know, and, you know. Farrakhan has a lot of children. He does. How many wives? He has multiple wives. It sounds like oxymoron, don't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, <clears throat> um, Elijah Muhammad had multiple wives. Yeah. Okay, I get, okay. I, I see why. I, I, I think I understand why. It's because their level of understanding, they had a different level, yeah. I guess, maybe, and they feel like they can do that, I guess. For, I don't, but. <laughs> So, I mean, I can't speak on his, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm not him, mm -hmm. but, you know, um, I really, can't. it's hard for me to even speak on another man's, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, situation. And I strive not to do that, but um, he does have multiple wives. You know, I don't know how many, you mm -hmm. know, um, he never wanted to. He never, he, he said he never wanted to have multiple wives. His wife wasn't happy about that. But he had to take on wise. He was, uh, the honorable Elijah Muhammad told him to go as you see me go. Mm -hmm. And he didn't want to take, like I said, he didn't want to take on wise. He's been married to his wife for I don't know how many long, but they grew up together. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, some of, his some of his children I know. I actually know quite a few of them. Yeah. Your age? My age. Some younger. How many children you got? I, I don't know. A lot. Oh. I would say he probably got like at least twenty. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> I mean, up. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, I, sh I, I shouldn't lot, be though. saying that yeah. if I don't know, honestly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, man. You know, it's different spirits in in all of them, man. And some of them take on a mission of 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 his and help it, help him with this mission mm -hmm. of raising us. Black people in this Western Hemisphere, well, really, most people got a misconception about the nation. You know, he's teaching all of us. You know, if you really listen to the minister, it's, you'd be surprised how many white Caucasian Muslims mm -hmm. that there are. Hmm. You never see them around. That follow the teachings of the Honorable Ms. Lewis. Do they Ward. be in the crowd? They be, they be there? Uh, yeah. It's Savior's Day they can come. That's the only day? Yeah, <laughs> that's to the public. <laughs> no. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. So, but, uh, what you mean to the public? Like, they're not really. they not the registered Muslims uh -huh. in the nation of Islam. But we do have believers, literally Caucasian Muslims, that follow the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Hmm. How do you feel about that? Never mind. No. I feel no. great about that. Uh -huh. See, a lot of. It's a misconception. See, we think that. The honorable, like, these teachings who taught us to hate Caucasian people. That was never the case. I grew up with these teachings. Mm -hmm. I got, when I was in college hooping, two of my friends that I still have today, Caucasians. I got my, my roommates was white. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my boy Mac mm -hmm. out in Oregon. So I used to hoop in Oregon. I played basketball, baseball, and ran track and, um, before I transferred to Morehouse. Mm -hmm. But, um, but, um, yeah, man, and I talk the same talk that I talk because they understood uh, the wisdom and the truth in which I understood and what I was teaching. They was like, "You really, you don't hate white folks? Like, of course not. Why would I? That's so belittling. That's 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 beneath me to uh, to give you that much value, anyways." Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. um, there was a girl I dated in uh, high school. She was she was adopted by two white parents, and uh, when I was dating her. Her family's big in the church. I sat mm -hmm. with him for like an hour and a half, two hours. We just chopping it up. I'm teaching, I'm talking like, talking, talking. And he's just like, wow, you, 
you can date my daughter. <laughs> but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, we talking about like everything. He asking me questions, the things that he's heard and all of these things. So the media don't want you to know the truth about, you know, the minister. They want to say that he's a hater or uh, whatever they call him, you know, all these different things. But they hate the truth that he teaches. Mm -hmm. But like I said, man, the truth going to defend itself. You put a clean glass next to a dirty glass. All you got to do is just... You know, choose. Choose. It's a great conversation. Man, I love you, bro. <laughs> you could talk all day about this, too. I could, man. We, yeah. yeah, we can switch it up, though. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on it. Religious, though. I know this controversial. Mm -hmm. yeah, real, real sensitive to some people. <laughs> yeah, it is, man. And, um, and forgive me if I misspoke about anything. You know, I'm taught, like, if I make a mistake in public, I got to correct myself in public. So if I did, you don't make a mistake. Anything that I said, please forgive me. I, I trust me. I, I leave with love. It ain't no. It ain't no hatred, man. I'm. It's all love with me. Mm -hmm. You know. Do you have any vices like vices? Things like you struggle with. You know, some people smoke weed and. Damn, we gonna get into this, huh? <laughs> mm. Damn. Um. I think uh, women. Yeah. I'm gonna stop right there. Um, yeah, it is. You say you take shrooms? Yeah. For what reason? Um, creativity. Hmm. Um, I just recently actually started, like that, maybe a a year ago. Is that against um, your religion? Um. I don't, it's not against religion, but uh, I do remember reading in How to Eat to Live that, you know, we should eat no mushrooms. Really? Yeah. I don't know if you're talking about shrooms, but it <laughs> is a mushroom, right? Oh, man. I but, love you know, I'm, being, I'm keeping man. a thousand, man. Um, What's wrong with the mushroom? What do they say? I don't the know. I got I to gotta read. I think that's in man. book two. <laughs> Dang. Uh, I love it. I like to eat mushrooms, and man, I love to take mushrooms. Yeah. But man, none of us perfect, man. Yeah, that's, we're not that's perfect. What, none man. of us perfect. Anybody striving to be perfect, even the earth not perfect. The earth not perfectly round. Mm -hmm. With that glow that they showing us, it ain't that. that it ain't that. It ain't that. Earth is all blown. It's dips and yeah, yeah, all yeah, these yeah. different things, Facts. you know. Facts. Yeah. So I want to be you, striving. I want to ask you that off off camera though, because I don't want you to get too deep on that mm. advice. But um, yeah. What you got going? What you got coming up, man? Ah oh, man. I'm going on this podcast, man. You know, For what? To more exposure. Mm -hmm. My bro uh, Swift was teaching me about a uh, pie. He was talking about like ten percent of of your success is is uh, performance. Thirty percent is uh, something else, but I know sixty percent is exposure. Exposure. And I spent a lot of my time behind this computer, like five days. I mean, five years just. Coding and truthfully, I never wanted to be in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I always wanted to just, you know, let the software be it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Don't you put a face on it? Yeah, I never want to put a face on it, but you know, we here now, mm -hmm. you know, and now like, you know, I'm just showing people not to look look at me though. I'm just showing you that, okay, you see me, but look at yourself, you know. And that's that's what I'm trying to give off empowerment. Mm -hmm. And I want people to get that from me. And I'm hoping hoping that um I'm delivering that to 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 people and I'm giving that shit off. You know. Word. Um, do you want to leave these people with any last words? You can look at that camera right there, buddy. Like Yeah, um, uh, man. Anything that you're striving to do, do it. You know, you ain't gotta read all these different books. I used to read four books a month, right? And I found myself just sitting there hoping that the book was gonna give me the energy. Nah, man, you just need to do one thing. Take massive and perfect action. That's it. And stay committed to it. It ain't gonna be perfect the whole time, but you are gonna learn along the way. So anything that you got in your mind, don't let that thought pass on to somebody else and they concretize it. You take it on, hold that thought, build on that thought, learn your season, summer, winter, spring, fall, your dips, you know, whatever you doing, you know, um, do that, man. Do it. And um, definitely sign up for Credit Fixer. The software is designed to provide you with the knowledge, tools, and resources to empower you and your family. 
Um, I got a family version where you can add up to three family members. And I got the credit fixer business. If you, have a, if you are a CRO, credit repair company, you can uh, fix credit for your clients. So, it's, man, I got the best software in the game. Mm -hmm. I'm, listen, I'm the most innovative. Just give me, give me, this the beginning, y'all. <laughs> man, you said you honored to be here. I'm really honored to interview you because I could see the future for you, bro. Like, Thank you. To say that, bro, hey, I interview, bro. And bro worth them bees, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, so yeah, I appreciate you coming through, man. I appreciate you believing in me, man. Yes, sir. So um, until we meet again, Rich Unemployed Podcast. Are you Rich Unemployed? Yes, sir. Man. Absolutely. All right, we out. We out. <laughs>